So having had a look at creating power through the shoulder coil and the forearm rotation, and we just touched on the wrist hinge, let's look at the wrist hinge in greater detail. Now, the club maker is very clever. When he gives you a 44 inch driver, the angle between your forearm and your shaft is really quite great. It doesn't take very much to find 90 degrees. So that's why when you swing a driver, the club maker is encouraging you to turn your shoulders and to use your forearms. Wrist hinge is a free gift. You've got to find the least amount of wrist hinge in the most amount of time because it's a longer swing. So just have a look at a wedge. Look how different the structure of a wedge is. So you can see from this position, the camera looking at me from sideways on, that there's a huge difference in the number of degrees created by the club. So with a wedge, I have to find the most wrist hinge in the least amount of time. The most wrist hinge in the least amount of time. So, the way the wrist, the forearm and the shoulders behave, is a spectrum. In the wedge, your swing is short, upright, wristy and non-rolly. And as you morph through the 13 clubs to driver, your driver becomes a long swing, which is flatter, and has forearm rotation and minimal wrist hinge. Now the good news for all of us is that if your posture is good and you load the shoulder, the mix of forearm and, and wrist is automatically dealt with. But it is good to know that there is a change because there's no point having wrist hinge with the driver and there's no point having loads of forearm rotation with a wedge. Wedges thrive on wrist hinge, drivers thrive on forearm rotation. So let's have a look at the pitching wedge. I lean forward, this is shoulder turn, this is form rotation, but wrist hinge is very noticeable. So now I'm going to hit you a full pitch with a mix of shoulder and wrist. I hinge going back and I re-hinge coming through. Now for you senior golfers, this is counterintuitive. The older you get, the more reluctant you become to hinge your wrists and then your left arm bends and you're in decline. So if you're over your mid fifties and you're playing golf, just double check for me that your wrists are hinging, particularly in your irons. From six iron down, you need wrist hinge. Your hybrids, your fairway woods, your drivers don't, but boy, pitching, bunker play, wedge, sand iron, lob wedge, nine iron, eight iron, seven iron, six iron, all those clubs require a healthy quota of wrist hinge or wrist cock. So here's the wedge swing in plane, no wrist, that below wedge, this is wrists. Okay, so you seniors out there, trust your wrist hinge, hinge the wrist going back, use them going through. It's counterintuitive, you're going to be more accurate with wrist hinge than without. So you can see, I'm going to find a great dollop of wrist cock in a very short space of time. The most wrist hinge in a short space of time. Okay. And if you do this, the forearms have to behave. If you don't cock your wrists, your forearms rule the roosts and you'll pull your wedges and block them. The word is blend, shoulder and wrist. You can't play golf in two distinct lumps, they'll know you're mad. You've got to mix the two together. Here we go, shoulder wrist, blend, release. You can hear the crispness of the strike, you can hear the sweetness of the strike. Shoulder and wrist, blend, there it is, release. And even though I paused on that one, it was the sweetest shot of the bunch. So, you might think that if I encourage you to hinge your wrists, you'll be less accurate. The fact is, you'll be more accurate and the ball will be loaded with spin when it lands. When we come under pressure, when we get tense, Tension is like rust, it creeps up the shaft, into the hands, into the forearms, into the wrists, and at that point you're going to struggle. Deep breath, keep your muscle tone loose, and let your wrists hinge freely in most of your iron shots. If you said to me, Luther, just give me one lesson, four minute lesson, to last a lifetime, perhaps you're emigrating, so Luther, I'm not going to see you again. Just give me one lesson. It would be the left thumb. In the Hitchhiker's Eye of the Galaxy, the answer to the universe, I think, is 52. Well, for me, 
It's the left thumb in golf. This is the secret of the universe. The link between the club and the body is the hands. If the body creates power, the power only gets to the club face through the hand action. So what we understood from the previous session on wrist cock is that if the left thumb is naturally placed, we get a wrist cock of 90 degrees. Lady golfers are often tempted to stretch the thumb an inch or so, and this is called a long thumb. Now when you have a long thumb, wrist cock goes well beyond the 90. But you can see that we're not made like that. So orthodoxy is based upon neutral muscle structure. If we were made like that, we would advocate that. But the fact of the matter is we're not playing golf out of a bush. The board's on the ground. So, if the left thumb hangs properly, it only goes as far as the first joint in your index finger. The moment this thumb goes beyond that joint, this starts to collapse and we've got problems. But the other thing that's fascinating is, it, it's the thumb being parallel to the shaft. If my thumb is diagonal strong, I will hinge this way and be across the plane at the top. If my thumb was diagonal weak, I would hinge over the plane and the club would be laid off. So the left thumb dictates how the wrists work. So we need a thumb that's neat in the pad and the thumb bone parallel. So you can see the wrist cock is not only 90 degrees, but it's 90 degrees in plane. So, so I show the ingredients, wrist hinge, shoulder turn. Now when you mix those two, the swing is short, upright and wristy. I fully hinge the wrist. Now I release. Now can you see, look at the end of the swing. I've not suppressed it, I've allowed them to re-hinge. So as I made, went back, I found 90. I dispensed it, but look, I found it on the way through. So when you're hitting a pitch and you want spin, stop, and your accuracy, the wrists hinge freely. So here's the mixture together. Blend and release. Now, if you want to hit half a pitch, you're just playing with ingredients. So half a pitch is half a shoulder and half a wrist. So I'm just mixing a cocktail. This is, this is half a shot. This is half shoulder, half wrist. You can see that the shot has scaled back. If I want it even shorter, I can give you a quarter shoulder and a quarter wrist. This is a little tiny pitch. But you can hear the creativity. To be honest, most of the time, you chip over that distance. Three quarter shot, three quarter wrist, three quarter shoulder. So, what we've understood from that, I trust, is that the cornerstone of the swing and therefore the grip is the left thumb being neat and parallel. Because from that, we know the wrist cock is good. What we've also understood is that wrist hinge creates a more accurate movement than non-wristy. If the wrists are reluctant and stiff, the forearms rule the roost and we pull and block the ball. If the shoulders and wrists are in sync, the forearms have to behave. And you know what I say to you, you get three for the price of two. If the shoulder and the wrists agree, the forearms have got to agree as well.